Now, if you've been diagnosed with dry eye, or if your doctor has told you that you need to optimize the ocular surface, how do you do that? Well, there's a lot of ways and there's a lot of different techniques, including medicines and different practices that you can do at home that can improve your ocular surface, and we'll talk about that today. Hi, my name is Dr. Joshua Cohen. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist here at Cohen Laser and Vision Center in Boca Raton, Florida. In my last video, I talked a little bit about problems of the ocular surface and how we can diagnose them. But today I wanna to talk about how we can fix them. So the ocular surface, as I mentioned, really contains three components, the eyelid, the cornea, and the conjunctiva. And for details about those structures, I will link to my previous video. But if you have a problem with the ocular surface, it really is often focused on optimizing the tear film or the layer of liquid that has to cover and protect the eye. Now there are three components of the ocular surface and they each require their own type of treatment. So the first layer is the aqueous layer. That's the saltwater component that's made in the lacrimal gland. A tear film deficiency or a lack of volume of tear film is a pretty obvious type of dryness or cause of ocular surface irritation. So replacing that liquid is an easy solution. And we do that with eye drops or artificial tears. Basically applying a drop a few times a day can help replenish the tear film and often improve a lot of your discomfort and improve your vision in some situations. Now artificial tears often come in different varieties with many different brands and a lot of them are perfectly fine. If they come in a large bottle like this, they often contain preservatives and we usually advise patients to limit that to more than four times a day because the preservatives can accumulate and cause additional irritation on the eye. However, Artificial tears can often come in a preservative-free form, which usually is in tiny little vials like this. You can pop these open and then use them throughout the day, and this you can use as often as you need. So for patients with more severe aqueous deficiency, preservative-free tears are a good substitute. And the last form is for really, really severe cases of dry eye, you can create serum tears, or in other words, artificial tears from your own blood. These require a special pharmacy and lab to make, so they can be a little bit pricey, and they have to be frozen before use, but they are really helpful in some severe cases of dry eye disease. Now, in addition to the artificial tears, we can also prevent drainage of those tears as well. Think of a bathtub. You can either increase the liquid in the tub by adding more water through the faucet, by cranking it up, or by plugging the drain. And we can do that as well. As I mentioned before, the tears drain into tiny eyelid holes called puncta, and that goes into your nose and your mouth eventually. And here in the clinic, we can put a little stopper in those puncta, at least one, maybe two, and that will limit the drainage. So therefore, even if you're not producing tons of tears naturally, if you prevent the drainage, you can increase the amount of liquid on the eye, therefore improving your ocular surface. That's called a punctal plug, and it takes just a minute to do, and it's often covered by insurance. Now, a new agent that is actually designed to improve or increase the tear volume is a prescription called Tervaya, which is Vereniclin. Vereniclin is a compound that's also found in Chantix, which is an oral medicine used for mood modulation as well as uh, smoking cessation. But Vereniclin has been shown to improve the activity of your fifth cranial nerve, which is the nerve that actually stimulates tear production. When the eye becomes dry or irritated, the fifth nerve becomes activated and actually tells the lacrimal gland to produce tears as a reflex. And this helps that along and stimulates the function of the fifth nerve. This is a nasal spray that's actually dosed again twice a day on the outside of the nostril. And it just came to the market a little while ago and also works pretty well for some patients. Another way to improve the ocular surface is to prevent inflammation. Inflammation can affect the eyelid in the form of blepharitis, or the conjunctiva in the form of conjunctivitis, or the cornea in the form of keratitis. And there are different symptoms and signs and causes of ocular surface irritation. It can be due to allergies, it can be due to infections by viruses, fungi, or bacteria or it can be due to mechanical irritation of the eye, whether the eyelid is in the wrong position, too high or too low, as I mentioned again in my previous video. We often treat ocular surface inflammation with topical steroids, and these are sometimes used in conjunction with antibiotics just to prevent infection because the use of steroids can predispose you to other infections. These medications are often used in a short time interval because there are other downstream consequences like pressure problems in the eye or cataract development that we wanna watch out for. But unfortunately, the effect of steroids on the rest of the body Body is very limited, so usually eye doctors feel comfortable prescribing them in certain situations. Now, ocular surface inflammation is really due to T cell and white blood cell activity. So we actually now have targeted medicines that can help inhibit those molecules from doing what they normally do, but these are prescription only. The two main classes are cyclosporin and lithidograst. Cyclosporin comes in the form of Restasis or Sequa. There is also generic cyclosporin available now. And cyclosporin inhibits calcineurin, which is an immune cell modulator. By reducing 
reducing T cell activity, we reduce the feedback loop that causes inflammation and all, a lot of the damage of the ocular surface due to these white blood cells. Think of them as like little grenades that are going off. The body feels that the eye is dry, so it produces more tears, but the tears also contain white blood cells that furthers the damage of the ocular surface and creating a vicious cycle. Lephitograss or Zydra also inhibits the T cells activity to bind to certain parts of the eye, therefore reducing their activity as well. Both of these are prescription, they are dosed twice a day, and they work quite well in many patients. Some of the side effects of these medicines are a funny taste in your mouth uh, or some irritation or even redness when you first put them in, but usually they're well tolerated and you can use these over a long period of time. And the last approach to improving the ocular surface through tear film optimization is lid hygiene. And this is often targeted at improving the meibomian gland function for people with evaporative dry eye or a deficiency in that oil layer. Warm compresses simply can just soften the oil glands and allow the oil to become less buttery and more oily so that they flow out of the glands more easily. We can also mechanically squeeze these glands either in clinic or through a procedure in the office called LipaFlow. We can also stimulate the gland production through special light delivery, Opulite by Lumenis, and that's generally called IPL or intense pulse light. And the other thing you can do is you can actually cleanse the eyelids as well. You can use baby shampoo just to remove any dead skin or surface bacteria, or you can use special sprays like hypochlorous acid, which we use before surgery for some patients. And hypochlorous acid can come in sprays or it can come in wipes. Other ingredients can be added to the wipes like tea tree oil, which is actually used to treat a special type of blepharitis called Demodex, which is a tiny little mite that lives on the eyelash follicles that can be a cause of chronic and poorly controlled inflammation of the eyelid. Also taking oral omega-3 supplements can be helpful at reconstituting the lipids and fatty acids in your tear film to improve my bony gland function. So vitamins like these are often used in conjunction with other lid hygiene practices to improve the overall health of the tear film and improve evaporative dry eye symptoms. So whether it's increasing the tear volume or controlling inflammation or optimizing the eyelid and ocular surface health overall, all of these components, again, are different avenues that we as doctors can help patients improve the surface of the eye. And this is not only important to make their vision stable throughout the day, but again, to improve the measurements and success when it comes to refractive surgery or cataract surgery, for example. Of course, talk with your doctor about some of these options if you feel that you may need to improve your ocular surface health. Now look, there's a lot more to discuss about these topics, but again, this is just an overview. But I hope this is helpful for you to understand a little bit more about what makes up the ocular surface and how we can treat problems associated with it. For more information, please visit our website at colonlaser.com. And also feel free to like and subscribe to this channel for more information on ocular health and the latest in refractive surgery technology and news. Thanks again for your time, and I will see you in the next one.